Today I'm going to show you how to make these super easy, delicious, and creepy Halloween cupcakes. They are going to be gone in a flash, so you better make a double batch. If you like my videos, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Okay, let's get started. For the batter, we're starting off with three cups or 360 grams of all-purpose flour. And let me warn you, this recipe makes like 40 cupcakes. So if you want to make less, cut it in half or make some cupcakes, make a little cake layer, freeze it for later, do whatever you want. 360 grams into our sifting. One tablespoon of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, half a cup of cocoa powder. Use any kind you like, but try to make it a nice one. Quarter teaspoon of salt. You can use a little bit more if you want that extra little bit of bite. Two and two thirds cups of granulated sugar. I swear this cake doesn't taste very sweet, but there's a lot of cupcakes here. So more sugar, more butter, more everything else. Oil, I didn't use butter. All right, sift it out. Give it a good whisk. You wanna make sure all those ingredients are well incorporated, nice homogenous mixture. You don't want one cupcake with all the leavening agents and the everything else is flat. Now we're gonna set this aside and deal with our wet ingredients. And yes, I know that sugar is technically a wet ingredient, but it's in the dry mixture anyways. Deal with it. <laughs> For the wet ingredients, we have three quarters of a cup of vegetable oil, three whole eggs that are room temperature. Don't use cold eggs when you're baking. It's a rule. <laughs> Two and three. Just give it a little whisk just to get it started. A tablespoon of vanilla. I'm using half a cup of sour cream, but if you can't get a hold of that or you don't like it, go ahead and use plain yogurt. It'll work just fine. Now, one cup of buttermilk, but going on a trip tomorrow and I didn't want to buy a full thing of buttermilk that'll be rancid when I get back. So I have some regular milk and I'm gonna cheat it by adding in hmm, a little bit less than a tablespoon of white wine vinegar. That'll curdle the milk, add the acidity and make everything great. <laughs> right, mix that up. You can use vinegar in a lot of chocolate cakes and it makes it really fluffy the extra acid will react with the leavening agents, just by the by. Okay, add that in there. Now, we have one and a half cups of strong coffee in this. I get a lot of questions about substitutions, so let me explain this. The coffee will add some coffee flavor, but mostly, like 90% of that, is upping the chocolate flavor. If you don't wanna do that, I've made this cake with regular old water before instead of the coffee, totally fine or you can add in less coffee, you could use more milk. It's gonna work out either way, or use decaf. If you wanna have all that chocolate flavor, but not so much coffee flavor, go ahead and add in like half a cup of coffee, one cup of water, you can water it down and it'll taste great. No one's gonna taste the coffee if you do that. I love coffee, so I'm adding basically pure espresso in here. Mmm, all right. Add that in, and the extra half cup too. So one and a half cups. Now let's give that a whisk. This smells so good. That's it. All we're gonna do now is combine the wet and dry together and then plop that into our cupcake papers and bake. I fitted my mixer with the paddle attachment, plop that down, and now just pour in your wet mixture while this is running on the low. Let it run for a couple minutes, scrape the bowl down, run for a few more seconds, and that's it. Scrape that bowl down. I just found out there is a paddle attachment that scrapes, and I will be buying it, but not today. That was one of the very helpful comments I got, which I love. If you have any suggestions, feel free to be kind and leave them below. And we're done. Take a look at how liquidy this batter is. If it turns out like this, that's right. Don't worry about it. It's not supposed to be gloopy. It is a liquid batter for an ultra moist cupcake. I'm filling these cupcake papers up using an ice cream scoop. It's the best way to get an equal amount of batter in every cupcake. 
and to have as little mess as possible. These cupcakes are gonna go into the oven at 350 for 15 to 20 minutes. They're gonna bake up really nice and flat, which is perfect for cupcake decorating. One of our next steps. Cupcakes are out of the oven. They're a little warm still, so just set them aside until they're completely room temperature before you decorate them. If you don't, that buttercream at the bottom is gonna melt and things will slip and slide and you will not be happy. I'm adding in one pound or 0.45 kilograms of room temperature unsalted butter. I'm gonna mix it up just to cream it and then we're adding in our confectioner sugar. Nice and creamy, it was pretty room temperature. I have two pounds or about 0.9 kilograms of confectioner sugar and I'll be adding it in to the butter in like two to three batches, but sift it first. You don't want any little sugar granules clogging up your piping tips. That will make you go crazy. Okay, let's sift it. Sift it up. Once that sugar is incorporated, like it has been right now, we're going to add in the rest of the sugar. So sift, sift, sift. Now we're gonna mix again, carefully. Okay. I'm almost worried of the sugar going. While this happens, drizzle in some cream. I have three tablespoons here, but you can add it in a tablespoon at a time until you reach the desired consistency. A little splash of vanilla never hurt anybody. Scrape the bowl down and let's check consistency. I did forget something though, and that is a very healthy pinch of salt. Maybe like a quarter to half a teaspoon. Add that in there and just mix it up. Now, this tastes delicious. Salt made a huge difference. Hmm. The next step is gonna be to color in a little bit of orange, a little bit of black, a little bit of green, etc. Leave some white, and then we're gonna get decorating. For the black, I'm adding black food coloring. You're gonna have to add a lot, but don't go crazy because all these buttercreams darken as that color is absorbed and they dry out a little bit, so it'll become blacker than it looks in the beginning. Okay, here's the color. It looks gray now, but trust me, it'll be black. On to the orange. For the orange, I'm using some icing color, which is pretty strong, so I'm gonna add it in little bits. And the orange is for the pumpkins, so pumpkins come in different colors. You can add as little or as much as you'd like. It's totally up to you. That's pretty orange, I'm happy with it. It'll also darken up a bit. Onto the black. Wait, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> we did black already. Onto the green. <laughs> For green, you can also use green food coloring, of course, but I'll be using blue and yellow because I ran out. Mix it up. This is for Frankenstein, so he's gonna have that nice putrid green skin, but also for my pumpkins to have some leaves. Okay, transfer to piping bags and let's get to work. To make the mummy, I'm adding a 46 tip in with that white buttercream. That's basically all I need. The black background is just gonna be spread on top. The orange buttercream is going into a piping bag fitted with a 2A tip or like a medium round tip. You could also just snip the tip off your piping bag and it'll work pretty well too. I'm taking a little bit of green buttercream and adding it into a piping bag fitted with a leaf attachment. I'm using a 352. Some of the black buttercream is gonna be used for detail work and I'm using a number four tip, but again, you could just snip the very tip off your piping bag and it works too. To make our little Frankenstein, it's really easy. Snip the tip off of my bag with the green buttercream and I'm just gonna pipe the top like that. Now use an offset spatula or any knife and just smooth the top out. Frankenstein has a flat head, so Flatten one of the sides. Then we have our black hair at the top. He has a scar or two from being a monster <laughs> that was assembled by Dr. Frankenstein. So just pipe on that detail work with your black buttercream. Now we plop two eyes onto our little Frankenstein. 
and a mouth that says, I'm unsure of my position in the world. Please don't come after me with a pitchfork. And there we go, one down, several to go. Now for our pumpkins. These are so easy, I love them. Orange buttercream. And we're just gonna drag it up and down, creating little arcs to make the appearance of a pumpkin, so. If you wanna clear things up at the top, just to take that mess away, use a little knife. Okay, the pumpkin is done. Let's draw a little face on top. Draw some triangles for the eyes, a triangle for the nose, and just do a zigzag for the mouth. And you can smooth it out if you need to as well. Just like making any jack-o'-lantern, the world is your oyster. You can draw whatever you want. Finishing off my pumpkin with a couple little leaves, that's all it needs. Kind of like hair almost. So, there we go. A little jack-o'-lantern cupcake. Super cute, and for those people who don't like a ton of frosting, this actually has a very thin layer of frosting on it, so it's gonna be delicious and highlight that delicious, 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 delicious chocolate cake. The mummy is actually my favorite. Really, really easy. Just spread on that black buttercream for a very thin layer. It's gonna be behind everything, so it doesn't have to be perfect or cover everything completely. Now pop on two candy eyes, and finally the bandages. Just draw those bandages right across the face. Any pattern you like. You can cover up the eyes a little bit too. And then clean the edge off with your finger if you want, but that's optional too. Pretty cute, what do you think? <laughs> now for my version of Jack from A Nightmare Before Christmas. So just a little bit of white buttercream. Smooth it up. Now we're gonna draw our little skull nose on, which is just two dots, but drag them up so it looks like a skull nose. And then two big eyes. And a crazy mouth that's been all sewn up. So one big smile. And then lots of little stitches on that smile. Okay, pretty creepy, super easy. For a really easy cupcake, make a spider web. Add that white buttercream just like you did before. This definitely doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna be manipulating it a lot. Okay, now that black buttercream, adding it in in a spiral, you could also use pure chocolate for this that you've melted and cooled. And now we're gonna use a toothpick and drag it across to create that spiderweb effect. So just clean your toothpick off a little bit between each drag. That's a spider web, super, super quick and really easy. If you want to, you could also add a little spider in the middle just by adding one peanut M&M chocolate, one regular M&M for the head, and then drawing the legs with chocolate or black candy melt. Then pop the legs on and you can even use some little gold or green sanding sugar and attach that with a tiny drop of buttercream for the eyes. Even though the mummy's my favorite, the jack-o'-lantern, in my opinion, is the cutest, so you get eaten first. Okay, I'm so ready for this. Sorry, jack-o'-lantern. Look at that fluffy, fluffy, soft chocolate cake. Oh, why did you eat me? Because you were there. All right, that's so good. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Happy Halloween in advance, and don't forget to subscribe.